We are finally finishing this book. I hope that it was, I know it was a very challenging book for many of you. Santa, you're sharing your entire screen. Can you, uh, is, is the sharing correct? Um, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed the book. I thought it was very interesting. Bum, 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 bum. I'm looking through notes here. Uh, Marwa has also given us her summary too. Santa, take me back there. I want to start here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Adriana has give, sent us a summary of the murder of Meriwether. Great. Um, Adriana, can you uh, go ahead and read this? And before you do, Santa, is it possible to make your screen bigger? You can increase the text size there. Yeah, that's actually better if you do it like that. Maybe one more. No. <laughs> Nobody likes Santa. Perfect. I like that. Now take me back to the beginning. Okay. And um, Adriana, please read your summary of the murder of Meriwether Lewis. Okay, I, I try I try my best to do a short summary, but the chapter is so long. <laughs> so, <laughs> two centuries after the mysterious death of Meriwether Lewis, collateral descendants still hope to clarify the conditions of Le Lewis' death. There are several conspiracy and non-conspiracy theories about his death. As we all know, he was named governor of the Upper Louisiana Territory. Six months after arriving to Louisiana, he had to go back to Washington to settle his disputes with the War Department and to try to publish his journal. It is during this trip that Meriwether Lewis died from two gunshot and knife wounds. That was at Grinder's stand close to Nashville. The question then is, who killed Lewis? Um, so there are conspiracy and non-conspiracy theories. The non-conspiracy theories um, include uh, suicide, but this is unlikely because he wrote uh, a letter a few weeks before his death announcing his intention to go back to St. Louis after finishing business in Washington. Another one is dying of syphilis or malaria or by the hand of bandits. Conspiracy theories, and that's the, mo the most appealing ones, are that his old friend Jefferson ordered his death. Uh, this theory claims he had information that could destroy Jefferson's reputation. Another one is assassination by agents sent by General James Wilkinson and Aaron Burr. Wilkinson and Burr were planning to invade Spanish territory with the intent of establishing a new government with themselves as leaders a plot to separate the Western states from American Union and to invade Mexico. Lewis' intention was to clear the Louisiana territory of corrupt factions, whether ordered by Wilkinson or Jefferson or some other political rival, Lewis had to remove, be removed. In any case, Lewis never made it to Washington, D.C. Excellent. Really super. It was a complicated chapter. Uh, and you did a super job with your uh, summary. And what made it really nice was you put it in sections. You described the death. Then you made it clear there were two areas uh, that defined how he died. One being the non-conspiracy theory, and the others being conspiracy theories, things we don't know. So Meriwether Lewis was a very famous American. He was super famous, and he died mysteriously, young. The family, now, 200 years later, the family wants to finally know how he actually died. Was it suicide? Was it syphilis or malaria? Or was it murder? If it was murder, perhaps who did it? Bandits? Did Jefferson order it? Was it Wilkinson or Burr, his 
competitors? Uh, was it uh, something else? Uh, but those are conspiracy theories, and nobody, of course, really knows uh, the truth. Uh, that's it. It's, it's actually very simple, um, and there is no answer, uh, but we're hoping for an answer. There's one aspect that you did leave out, and I'm going to see if Marwa perhaps added it, but Adriana, you did a super job, um, a really excellent job. Was it easy for you to understand, or was it okay for you? How many times did you listen? How many times did you read? What did you do? Uh, I, re I read it twice. <clears throat> First, I was trying to get the main um, ideas, and then I did uh, a summary of those ideas. So when you uh, wrote your summary, I'm, I'm curious how your mind works. Uh, were you looking at the book and writing the summary? Were you thinking about it and writing the summary? Do you think in Spanish and then think in English? What, what do you do? Um, I was reading, uh, reading the book and thinking of the summary, and then I went to write it in English. And, and now I don't have to translate. Before I used to, but now I don't. Oh, that's, that's so important, uh, and that's really good. Uh, it makes you feel good when you don't translate. Yeah, whether other people understand or not, I don't translate. <laughs> well, I understood everything. It was great. Really super job. Let me go ahead and, and Santa, take us to Marwa's. I think you have three now. Did, did Eva send one too? What do you have there, Santa? And Mahmoud, my goodness, everybody sent one. Wow, I'm super impressed. Okay, let's, let's run through them. Uh, who's next, Santa? I'll get rid of my mug here. We don't need to see that. Marwa is next. Marwa, go for it. Read along. Okay. Okay. After his new position, Lewis delayed one year in Philadelphia. Many reports during this time assert his mental depression. His delay was concerned was concerned um, and unjustifiable by Jefferson. Frederick Bates sent letters to Jefferson to undermine Lewis' efforts. The worst when James Madison became president and uh, his War Department refused to pay expense, expense vouchers, what caused severe financial troubles to Lewis. Lewis' last and final trip was to Washington to settle his financial dispute. Major James Neely joined him at Fort Pickering. Uh, Lewis preceded him and checked in alone in Grinder Inn, where Lewis died with series, uh, with series of knife wounds. Uh, First and subsequent details were sent by Wilkinson Appentee, Neely, and Gilbert Russell. Their reports created the assertion of Lewis suicide. Both were absent during uh, the accident, uh, what made the reports to be untrusted. Two years later, Mrs. Grinder told her testimony, uh, which was considered as yeah. Yeah, per preposterous and uncompleted. Some go further to suspect her as a participant in this crime to shield the actual criminals. Several murder theories were explored to find the actual criminals. Hold up, hold Once up, I'm lost. Hold up, I'm lost. Santa, I'm really confused. Okay, uh, several... You sent me um, in two sections, so it's kind of like... Okay, bring it down. Bring the two years later, bring to the next page, please, so I can see that again. Where are we? Here? No, no, go up. And right in front of the T, put your cursor, the two. Right in front Where's of the, the T. Action criminals, the last word, actual criminals. Marwa, okay, where but are I, you? I, I, but I missed everything. Go ahead, Marwa. Start at two years later, please. Two years, okay. Uh, two, mm -hmm, where I am? Oh, yeah. uh, two years later, Ms. Mrs. Grinder told her testimony, which was considered as preposterous and uncompleted. Some go further to suspect her as a participant in the crime to shield the actual criminals. Several murder theories were explored to find the actual criminals. Uh, one suggested, that, uh, suggested his old friend, Jefferson, with Neely and Major Russell. 
uh, they might kill uh, Lewis to hide secrets about Wilkinson that might destroy their reputations. Another alleged that uh, it was a conspiracy held by his, his enemies, General Wilkinson and Aaron Burr, uh, who were known with their treason and planning to invade Mexico to, to, uh, and separate the Union, along with their allied um, John Smith T. Until now, the question still remains uh, who killed Lewis? Either did he commit suicide because of depression, as the, the official historical story, or was he uh, killed by bandits or by high ranking official of U.S. government. Excellent job. Really, really super. Once again, uh, both you and um, both you and uh, Adriana were using quite difficult vocabulary, which is okay. Um, I mean, the story was complicated. Um, I would like to see a simpler usage of vocabulary because, remember, this is something that I want everybody to remember, and this is not easy, very difficult. When you make a summary, what I want from you guys is uh, I want you to, to put the book or the audio book to put it away and tell me what happened. That's what I want, which is really tough because this story is complicated. It goes back and forth and back and forth. But when you do that, when you put away the book and then retell the story, usually the vocabulary you use is much easier, which helps other people catch the story. But once again, both uh, Marwa and Adriana so far have done a great job, super job. We've got two more. Who's next, Santa? Eva is next. Eva, go for it. Oh, yes. My much more... That's fine. <laughs> okay. The last chapter deals with opinions on Meriwether Lewis's death. The fact that he died unexpectedly at the young age and unexplained circumstances, circumstances has given a large space for different theories and speculations. There are two possible ways how he died. The first is that he committed suicide because of his health problems and or his mental problems. The second one is that somebody helped him. The big part of this chapter reveals possible enemies who and why they could have wished his death. Excellent. This uh, is also an excellent summary. Now, if you notice, we lost a lot of detail. We lost a lot of names and things like that. But that's okay. Remember, with the summary, a, what is a summary? A summary is the basic idea. You don't need to memorize facts. You want to get the basic idea out there. And hopefully, if your listener is interested in your summary, then they will go and read it. Hopefully they will want to know more and then read it. And this is the idea of a summary. A summary is a general overview, not too many facts, but you want to encourage your listener to be interested so that they go and get more information. So we've got two different types of summaries happening right now. Um, and I, I do, believe it or not, I do prefer the shorter version. I do prefer the shorter version. The longer versions are great, and it's a really good opportunity to practice uh, English and to really get the mind thinking about the story, to really analyze it. Uh, but the shorter method is good, too. Let's go to Mahmoud. Mahmoud? Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Santa. Uh, uh, critiques and summaries, a little bit different there. Uh, but we haven't had any critiques yet. We'll talk about critiques later. Uh, Mahmoud. Let me get rid of my mug. All right, go for it, Mahmoud. We don't know anything about the last hours of the relatively short life of the explorer Mary 
weather, Luis, in the early hours of October 11, the morning of 1809. Louis, the governor of a large area of land that formed in the Louisiana upper region, was on his way to Washington, D.C. I don't know what means D.C., sorry. It's okay. For the settlement of financial issues. He arrived alone at the inn. That night, Mrs. Grinder, the innkeeper's wife, heard several gunshots. gunshots. She said later she saw Andrew Lewis crawls around big begging for water. They seem to have died because of because of the effects of a gunshot wound to the head and abdomen. Before sunrise the next day, one traveling companions arrived later and burned them soon. Some say that Lewis died committed committed suicide, succumbed to depression, alcohol dis disorder, malaria, syphilis, 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 or both. In addition, other are certain bandits murder him, murdered him. Other also think Louis killed as a part of the conspiracy, conspiracy uh, to assassinate senior of officials of the booming U.S. government. Now, Lewis, Lewis this descendant, descend, descendant, are campa campaigning exhumation, the body that bird in National Parkland. But some scienti scientists are not so sure that, the, uh, that an exhuma exhumation will clarify things. Clarify things. Uh, because there was no real evidence or witness about Lewis's death, we will not know defini definitively how he died. Again, super job. Um, you covered the basic stories. There was a lot of information on the conspiracy theories and you didn't give too much information in that area, which is okay. But um, I would encourage you, it was confusing, so that's probably why you didn't include it. But I would encourage you, considering the length of your summary, to include a little more excitement or mystery about uh, the conspiracy theories, okay? Okay. Yeah, it was great. Okay, I'm going to take questions in a second. I want to add one thing, and I mentioned uh, Adriana when she made her summary. She kind of left out one thing, and I listened to the next three, and everybody seemed to leave it out. In this book, we have a protagonist and an antagonist. The protagonist is who? What does the protagonist mean? Protagonist means the hero. Lewis. Lewis, yes. The protagonist is Lewis in the book. And the antagonist would be the anti-hero, the enemy. Who in this book, who is the antagonist? Wilkinson and Burr. No. no? Maybe. We don't know. Maybe. U.S. government? Almost. Victorian. Who specifically? Um, I forgot the name of this. Uh... Smithsonian. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, I knew you knew. Uh, the Smithsonian Institute is the antagonist, right? Every, every time we talk, at the end of the chapter, we talk about the Smithsonian. Smithsonian. Um, so the Smithsonian is the antagonist. And this is maybe important, maybe not important. 
Um, but to this family, it's very important. And maybe to America, it is important um, because the Smithsonian writes the history books. So every history book that you see in America basically was authorized by the Smithsonian. Um, so now the question is, if we discover that Meriwether Lewis committed suicide, like the Smithsonian says, end of story, oh, it's too bad, alcohol, syphilis, depression, oh boy, that's bad stuff, end of story. Anyway, let's remember he was a great man for his uh, uh, early years, end of story. But if we discover he was murdered, by bandits? Oh, that's terrible. If he was murdered by government-related people, why? Why? And, and the Smithsonian is interesting. Um, they are against finding out the truth. And the question is why? Is there, is there something important? Because America prides itself on an open government and democracy, and we pride ourselves on, you know, if somebody's guilty of something, we, we take that person to court. We, we have a, a lot of pride in a very organized, democratic, uh, legal system and government. And has, has this been a lie for a long time? This is, this is the idea. Uh, one of the big ideas of the book. That's why this murder, who murdered possibly uh, Meriwether, uh, is, is an issue for many people because they have a feeling that the Smithsonian and other special people uh, tend to hide too much information from the uh, general public. That's it. That's it. Why only him? What about his friend? What do you mean his friend? Which which friend? Uh, you mean Clark? Clark, yes. Um, yeah, that's a... The, so the question there probably would go to the government power. Uh, Meriwether Lewis was the governor. He was the one who was really in control of cleaning Louisiana. Or... Meriwether Lewis was the person who was very close to Jefferson. So he might know too much information about Jefferson and his relationships with these other people. Um, Clark was, it's like Batman and Robin. Do you know Batman and Robin? Of course. Lewis is Batman. Clark is Robin. Nobody cares about Robin. Robin's cool. We like Robin. We need Robin. But uh, Batman's the target. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm, sure the Clark, I'm sure the Clark family will be very angry at me. He's not Robin! <laughs> okay. Uh, questions about the story. It's, it's a mystery story, and the idea, the point of the story is don't necessarily believe everything you read in the history book. And here's an example. That's the idea. Uh, and for me, um, I, I, I really enjoyed it, uh, but it was much more difficult uh, than I thought. So I know that you guys struggled. Hopefully now that we're done, hopefully you can look back and, and see that, oh yeah, it's kind of interesting. Ah, uh, <laughs> rehab, I understand. It's, it's time to eat. <laughs> thank you, rehab. Yeah, thank you, coach. <laughs> see you soon, everyone. Yep, enjoy Bye. your meal. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Questions? Any questions? Rehab, uh, people who are watching this, Rehab left a message. She has to leave to prepare the Ramadan breakfast. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'll go ahead and leave it there. Great job, everybody. I, I appreciate your tenacity in finishing a difficult book. Yeah, I have, I have a specific question. I, I so Marwa and then Eva. Marwa, go ahead. Okay. Uh, is Jane Madison is present or was present? Yeah, Madison was, yes. Then he was the president in the latest day of uh, Lewis? Let me check the dates. I don't even know. He's the fourth president. So he was after, yeah, way, a, way after uh, 1809. Yeah, so he was president during, yeah, when Mary Le Weather Lewis was killed, he actually was president. Yeah. I get confused because they mention Jefferson too much. Right. And actually, Madison was the president during this this, this accident. Right. Um, yeah. It's it's like this. Even though Jefferson wasn't president anymore, he's still one of the fathers of America. So mm -hmm. you know, he was still right there. It's got. It's like uh, it's like in Russia, they had President Putin, then they had President Medvedev. But when President Medvedev was president, President Putin was right there. Um, it's like he was still the president, and now it's President Putin again. Um, it's like if, uh, if Hillary Clinton becomes president of the United States, Bill Clinton will kind of be president, too. He'll be right there. Eva, go ahead. Uh. Okay, I, I don't have a question. I only want, wanted to say that um, this book was a really a discovery for me because I haven't even expected that something like that happened. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love it. That's I like that. That's great. I wouldn't read it uh, by myself if I wasn't. Force. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is the type of book that teachers force their students to read. <laughs> Great. Okay, Great. Okay, let's go ahead and go to uh, the magic finger. Now, once again, I have not, I'm sorry, I have the audio book, but uh, I didn't listen to any of the stories. I'm, a, I'm bad, but I, that was okay. I have, I'm busy, damn it. Uh, but we have one final story. Santa, can you go up just a little bit uh, and it, in this uh, doll book? Uh, a classic children's stories. And the chapter, the story was called The Magic Finger. And on our list, Mahmoud is first, Santa. Is that true? And Mara's got another one. Okay, so it's going to be Mahmoud and Marwa. Now, once again, to both of you, I have not uh, read the story. I've not listened to the story. So I hope you do a great job so that you interest me so that I will eventually listen to the story. Santa, take us back to Mahmoud, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, listen to his fantastic summary. And maybe we can bring it onto one page. Can you? Otherwise, we're going to have problems again. No, no, no. You can just return it. I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, go go up a little bit and put your cursor right by the summary, by the S. Put your cursor, click right in front of the summary, the S. No, 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 the lower one, please. Yeah, and then hit return about ten times. Oh, you want it in one page, All right. Yes. And that's going to make it easier to, uh, to stay I'm together. I'm sure it's not big enough for you. <laughs> it's not big enough for me, no. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mahmoud, is that big enough for you? It's not big enough for me. It's okay. <laughs> okay, everybody's afraid of Santa. Go ahead, I'm listening. <laughs> 
You don't care about children's story. Mm. No, no, no. It's not that. It's not that. Um, if I have to make a decision between history or a children's story, I'll do the history. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> On the farm, there are Philip and William, Greg, and their parents, Mr. and Mrs. Greg. Every Saturday morning, they used to go into the wood for hunting animals and birds just for playing fun. The farm next door, there is a, na a narrator, eight-year-old girl who has a magic finger. Whenever she gets cross and sees red, her magic is activated. Her finger watches cousin, a sort of lighting flash, jump, jumps Scott, out. Her finger, her finger twitches causing a sort of lightning flash. Yes. Say it again, please. Huh. Her fingers twi twitches, causing a sort of lightning flash, jumps out into the person of her eye, and turn him or her into birds or an animal like her old teacher when turned into a cat. Because they were hunting, that makes her very cross. She tries to talk to talk, to talk them out of it, but the Greg only laughed at, at her. So she turned her magic finger on Greg family, and now they turned into tiny humans with wings as a duck, as ducks. When they turned into ducks, they have arms and legs, and they cannot cannot live in their house anymore like a human. So they have to make a nest on a tree and lie, live as a bray. In addition, their former bray moves into the house to become the hunters. Now the ducks start shooting at the Greg instead. In the very end, the family decides to stop hunting and feeding birds instead. Moreover, the people turn back to normal and Mrs. and Mr. Greg smash, smashes all guns into tiny pieces or pieces with a huge hammer so they never go hunting again. Wow. Uh, critique. 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 <laughs> the story is not just about boys or girls or birds or just a funny story. It is, it's about behavior that affects those who are powerless and innocent. This story teaches children how to be kind, kindness, empathy, and how to treat everyone with respect by imagining yourself in someone else's position to understand how he feels. And this book teaches it, teaches it beautifully with humor and magic. Of course, it is funny too, especially with Mr. Greg, because he is funny and sometimes a scaredy cat. Finally, if you have a magic finger, please use it for a good cause. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, it was very good. I really think uh, I understand the story, and I even have a kind of a visual image of what happens. Um, I I have never heard of a you know a movie or a TV show about this book, but it sounds like another uh, success story. Uh, it sounds great, and I like your critique. Um, I'm curious about the empathy aspect, um, so I'm going to ask you about that a little bit later, uh, but it was really good. It, it, uh, does it encourage me to want to read the book? Mm, no. no, of course not. <laughs> but, uh, but I do have an appreciation uh, for the story. Uh, you gave me such a great imagery and, and good description of the book. I think I have a good understanding. And if I have a child, I would want my child to read the story for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let me go to Marwa. Marwa's summary of The Magic Finger.
We'll let Santa finish up here. Don't worry, Santa. Go ahead. Take your time. You're working hard today. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some time ago, a little girl who has neighbors who love hunting more than anything else. The parents and their kids take their guns every day and shoot birds. Uh, the girl asked them to stop th this silly game, but they laughed at her. So she became so angry and turned it to red. And then did a very strange thing. She didn't mean to. She put her finger, her magic finger, on them. They turned it to be ducks, a very huge ducks. All of them, even their kids, who said, "Mama, we can fly." They flew through the window. They were so happy to feel like a bird and flew together high in the air mm. but in the but in the night they couldn't c go back home they uh, their house was occupied by strangers they built a nest and spent this hard night then they looked down to see their garden strangely they saw enormous ducks walking on their legs the ducks had guns pointing toward them they became so fr they became so frightening and asked the ducks to stop shooting the older ducks told, to, uh, laughed at them and said, no, because we, you killed my little ducks before and this is my turn. The neighbor promised the ducks not to shoot them again. Then, all at once, everything went back to normal once again. At that moment, the girl came to see what happened. She, was, uh, she saw her neighbors and was smashing all their guns and placed beautiful flowers upon the, the little ducks' graves that was shot before. And they played with ducks and fed them. Just then, from, some, uh, from somewhere over uh, by the lake, someone held his gun to shoot the ducks. The girl turned to be, to be red again, her finger pointed at him, and finally he spent all the night building a nest. <laughs> oh, great. Very good. Now, this is interesting because remember uh, in Mahmoud's critique, he was talking about empathy. And I, and I wasn't understanding the empathy link. But now, after listening to Marwa's summary, I got it. The Greggs learned empathy because they became ducks and they learned to experience life as a duck. Is that right, Mahmoud? Yes. Got it. So, both of you did a great job. And to be honest, mm, I don't know why, but I think maybe because Mahmoud was first. I think Mahmoud's story was a little more visual for me, and uh, Marwa's story was a little more factual for me. So when I was when I was listening to Mahmoud, I was kind of seeing things, and when I was listening to Marwa, I was more analyzing things. I think probably because of the uh, the empathy question, I really was able to get it. So I would have to say a combination of your summaries would really be perfect. Once again, they are a little longer than I want. I really do want them to be short, short. Remember Eva's summary of the last chapter, that short is fine. I really do want them to be short. Uh, but you both did an excellent job. And the critique that, uh, you provided for us, Mahmoud, is really good. And for me, as a parent, kids, children don't care about critiques. But as a parent who's looking for a book for his or her child, uh, your critique uh, was really beneficial and, uh, and excellent. Super, super job. Questions. Questions on the magic finger. So what about me? I like hunting. Am I a bad guy? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't hunt to hunt. I hunt to eat. Yeah, this is the, if there is a reason. That's okay, okay, right? Yeah, I think that, yeah. But uh, I think though, this just uh, want to play. Yeah. 
hunt for hunting. That's it. I'll, I'll tell you an embarrassing secret. Um, when I was young, I was probably, um, yeah, I was in Greenwood, so fourth grade. Probably in third grade. Third grade elementary school um, was when I got my first gun. And uh, you couldn't kill a human with the gun, but it was a gun. Um, and I would go and I would shoot cans, tin cans, you know, just for fun, shooting cans and, and things like that. Um, and then one day I shot a bird, just a regular bird. And, uh, and then for probably that summer, uh, no, I never shot people. Uh, that summer, I probably shot probably 10 birds. Um, and it, I, I thought of myself as a hunter. You know, I'm shooting birds. I'm, you know, her, I'm hunting. Okay, I wanted to be like my dad. Uh, but eventually my dad saw me shooting a bird. And my dad took the gun away from me and said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm hunting. And he said, no, you're not. You're killing. And that's not what you do with a gun. Guns are for hunting. What does hunting mean? Hunting means you shoot something and you eat it. It's for food. And that's what you use guns for. And it, it scared me because my dad took the gun so, 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 you know, abruptly. But... It was the best lesson in my life. Then I realized, oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was killing. I wasn't hunting. I was killing. And that's not what guns, you know, that's not what we should use them for. So it was a good lesson for me. So uh, I, I like the story. My dad, my dad had the magic finger. <laughs> and he's a hunter. Who would you, I think the question, Mahmoud, should be this. Who would you touch if you had a magic finger? Who would you touch if you had a magic finger? Oh, boy. Anybody? Who wants to answer that? Who would you touch if you had <laughs> many people? Yeah. Is there anybody you can think of? Politician. <laughs> Polit exactly. Uh, I, I would touch all the politicians. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Is there anybody else? Who would you touch? Who's a bad guy? There's so many bad guys. <laughs> Adriana, Adriana, you sent the message privately so other people can't see the message. Should I read it? I'm sorry. I was I was going to share with some everybody. <laughs> Adriana said. Trump is the first person I would touch. <laughs> What's wrong with Trump? Come on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what, do you like Hillary? Hillary is just as bad. Small. I like Bernie, but I think she's the best of two devils. So. Yeah, there. I agree. Devils, yep. <laughs> yeah, you know, somebody, somebody said something really interesting. Somebody said... Uh, how about this election in America, we don't elect a president for four years. Let's just go without a president for four years. Let's see what happens. And I was thinking, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I, I agree. It's not a good idea. But it, it's, it's an interesting, the idea is, is we've been really bad at choosing a good president. <laughs> Uh, I know Obama was a good president. He's a good president. I don't think so. In the beginning, he's he's got the right ideas, but yeah, it's it's he's got he's got nice ideas, but uh, I don't know if, if if he'll be remembered as a good president. Hope I used to like you, Shane. I used to like you. <laughs> yeah, I would vote for you, with God, Shane. <laughs> But at least Obama has uh, had a good idea one day. <laughs> no, that's it's important. Yeah, I mean, um, ideas are are very important. Horrible idea from the beginning. <laughs> true, true. 
Eva, I think you're right. I think what Eva says is unfortunately probably true. Nice people don't go into politics. I think that's true. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, uh, Mahmoud, your question was too too dangerous. Uh, we're going to go to the last <laughs> section, the opening of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I want to uh, check something out here. Hold on a second. I'm opening up my audio book. Um, so what we have here, I'm just looking at the chapters. So what we did, uh, what I am prepared for today is just chap, according to the audio book, chapter one. Um, but it's actually not, if you listen to the audio book, it's the opening. It's actually not chapter one. Um, and if you listen to chapter one, we're, I'll talk about it in a second. At the end, he says there are six parts. And that's what we're going to do every week. We're going to do uh, lesson one, which I think is probably two or three chapters. Then lesson two, you know, later on. So we're going to do, uh, uh, at the end, I'll tell you again, we're going to study lesson one. We're going to listen to lesson one, which is probably on the audio book, I'm guessing chapter two, three, four. Pitch. Chapter two. Lesson two. Why teach financial literacy? Yeah, I'm Chapter a genius. Two. I'm a genius. Lesson Hold two. up. Why teach financial literacy? So, uh, once again, today on the audio book was chapter one. Two weeks later, we're going to do chapter two, three, four. So, that's actually information for Santa because she can put that in the email. Um, but anyway, so today we're doing chapter one in the audio book. Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, this was recommended to us by Marwa. And Marwa, why did you choose this book? Uh, my brother read it before. And um, uh, he talked about it, and I think that it is a great book. Mm. So this is interesting to me. We need it, yeah. We need, we need this information. We need this uh, financial uh, learning. Mm, yeah, this is this is really interesting to me. Um, I want to mention a word, entrepreneur. Santa, can you write down the word entrepreneur? Um, does everybody know that word? No, oh, I got to finish up here quickly. Yeah. What does it mean, entrepreneur? Somebody that makes business or companies, create companies and business. That's right. Somebody who starts a business. It can be internet. Uh, it can be a McDonald's. It could be a restaurant. It could be a delivery company. It could be a construction company. Anything uh, is, is possible. But somebody, LME, right. Uh, yeah, in that respect, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, Adriana, can you mute your mic? I hear the birds. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's a, a nice sound. I like the sound. Um, but, yeah, that's the entrepreneur. So um, this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is very interesting to me because to me it seems like it's a real American-style book because Americans really like to start businesses. This is my thinking. So when Marwa suggested the book, I was like, oh, wow, is, is this – does this translate – in Egypt, and then Marwa says, "Yeah, we need this type of education, uh, this this uh, money education." So, my next question is: You, as an individual, maybe if you're older, maybe when you're younger, or maybe right now, whatever. Um, when your idea of success is it to work? For somebody, is it to work with somebody, or is it to work by yourself? This is my question. You know, to work work as an employee, or to work as a partner, or to work as a boss. This is my my question for you guys. Uh, and you don't have to answer. It's just I'm I'm t thinking out loud. Do you want to work for somebody? Do you want to work with somebody, or do you want to be the boss? 
And this is interesting because in our most recent DDM assignment, we're studying uh, a man by the name of Elon Musk. And Elon Musk is an entrepreneur. And I got about five emails from students who said, oh, I love him. I want to work for him. And I thought that was really interesting because I think about Elon Musk and I, I would not want to work for him. I would like to work with him. That would be cool. Or I would like to have a, my company work together. That would be great. So this is a, this is a, a, a method of thinking. And that's what he talks about in the opening. How you think about work and money really is important in how you manage your career and your finances, which is what the first chapter, the opening in this book was about. Your thought process. How do you look at the world? Some people look at the world and say, I want to work for him. Some people say, I want to work with him. Some people say, I want to hire him. Really different thinking. In the book, what he said was, you see something, I don't have the money to afford it. Or you see something and you say, hmm, how can I make the money to afford it? It's a really different thought process. And you, me too, need to really think about yourself and think about, yeah, how do you look at work, your career? How do you look at money, using money, saving money, making money? How, what are your natural thoughts? And are those thoughts rich dad thoughts or poor dad thoughts? That's what the book is going to be analyzing and the book is going to try and influence us or persuade us to have rich dad thoughts. This is the basic idea of the opening and of the rest of the book, which is going to take us about, looks like uh, six or maybe even seven classes to, to finish this. So, I, I talked for a long time there. Does anybody want to add something? Does anybody have a summary of the opening? I doubt it. If you do, that's fine. Um, but uh, any questions or comments or anything about this new book that we're starting? I smell some boredom. No. <laughs> Mahmoud, I was thinking about you. Mahmoud, you, uh, aren't, you're an entrepreneur, aren't you? What mean entrepreneur? What mean entrepreneur? Entrepreneur, somebody who starts a business. Thank you, Gulia. Yes, I'm <clears throat> entrepreneur. You have your own company, right? Not company. I have my business work, my own work. And you're a freelancer? Yes. That's an entrepreneur. Uh, entrepreneur. Okay. Yes. I'm entrepreneur. That's a good thing. <laughs> uh, yes, because I'm boss myself. The more you work, the more money you earn. Mm. Mm, not Maybe. exactly. Sometimes. Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Do you have any employees? Uh, no. Sometimes do you hire people to do something? Yes, sometimes. Then uh, you have employees, project. freelance employees. Yes. Yeah, you're 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 doing uh, the rich dad method. Uh, maybe I don't know. Well, you'll find out. You'll find out. <laughs> Okay. okay, I love this book now. 
<laughs> okay, now there's another suggestion, um, and I think it was Adriana who suggested a book. Adriana, did you recommend Time Machine? Was that you? Uh, yeah, it's it's me just because I ha I like sci-fi, but um, but I you know have to have to go with that because it's it's, it's, it's somebody likes sci-fi. No, no, that's 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 fine. Um, I actually, um, I was I think this is a good book to choose. The problem is the recommendation that you gave. The narrator is British. Yeah, I love. Her. But I did find an American narrator. So would you mind if I used a different narrator? No problem. Yeah, so I think I'm going to uh, choose this book too, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Time Machine, but not for next meeting. So as Mahmoud said, I sense boredom. I worried about that. So I think what we'll do again is I, I will have two books going at the same time. If you can, listen to both books. But if uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is boring to you, then we're going to start uh, the time machine probably uh, in two weeks. Uh, I'll give you that stuff. If the time machine is boring to you, then focus on this. So you can actually... Uh, listen to both or listen to one or the other. They should be very different books. I will give Santa the link for uh, the Time Machine with the American author and we'll send that out. So you guys can go ahead and uh, get the book if you'd like. Um, if you have a credit on audible.com, definitely get it. Um, and we're going to start with two books, but not our next meeting. Next meeting, we're only going to do lesson one from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then two weeks later after that, we'll have lesson two and the first part of the Time Machine. Time Machine is a classic, classic, classic story. Yeah, give it a, that's why I want everybody to give it a shot first. That's right. Questions. Oh, thank you, Santa. Look, checking out the dates there. Are those the dates, Santa? Great. That'll be lesson two and first part of the time machine. Comments, questions. Uh, so the audiobook chapters are going to be chapter two, three, four for Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Chapters 2, 3, and 4. Which is a lot. It's over an hour. I don't think you can... But it's really, really easy to, to listen to, so I don't think it's going to be a uh, problem. I agree. It is, it is not overly difficult. Uh, and it's beneficial. It's 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 good information too. Yeah, his language is very easy. You can listen to it um, and and learn. It's a very nice book. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, Sydney says it's two, three, and four. Yeah, chapters two, three, and four is lesson one. Lesson one is. Chapter two, three, and four. All right. Okay. Thank you. On the audio book. On the audio book. And I have the book itself, but I don't know. Does anybody have the book? Ah, here it is. Look at that. I have it in my library, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, so in this, if, if you have the actual book, Oh, yeah. Um, in the actual book, it's, it's just chapter two is lesson one. Chapter three is lesson two. Uh, so if you actually have the book, um, it's just chapter two. But the audio book is chapter two, three, and four. Actually, I have another book of his, too. I'll show you.
cash flow quadrant. <laughs> Same author? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like uh, I like history books. I like religious books, and I like business books. I like history when it, when it comes to through drama or story, yeah. like Tale of Two Cities and Misery of London stories. It's very nice, but uh, our last book is really complicated. <laughs> no, I know. The history, yeah. Adriana only four. Adriana only has four cats, just four. <laughs> <laughs> My cats are sleeping right now. Sydney, you have a cat too, don't you? Sorry? Do you have a cat? No, 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 no cats, no dogs. And I usually fast two hours per day. <laughs> Sydney, Sydney's a, a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sydney, what do you do? You sound like a, an artist of some type. No, 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 no. I was a mathematics teacher for a period of my life, yes. And then after for a long period I joined the Navy for 15 years. And then I left and came back to teaching. And now I'm retired. So you were a math teacher, then a sailor, and then a math teacher again? Yes, I came back. It, uh, I love this. Uh, I really love it to, to analyze how people think. It's very interesting. Uh, there is a logical thinking. It fascinates me when people, they, they, easy, they become easy, they think. The methodology, the communication, how to communicate, to understand the other thoughts, it's fantastic. For me, that's uh, the most important thing. It's, to analyze and to understand how people think and how we think as a reflection as the other think. When we see you, when somebody thinks, I analyze myself and I get what can improve in my think and my my way of life of living. I, uh, that's it's a fascinating subject. Yes, sure. I really love that. Do you live uh I don't mean to change the subject. Do you live by the water? Yes, I live next to the water, yes. Uh, the ocean, I assume? Yes, that's it. That's a excellent place to go meditate. Yes, sure, it is. Wow. It's a very interesting place. Uh, the name of, uh, I live next to a beach called um, this place. Ita Quart. Tierra Niteroi. Yes, Rio de Janeiro. It's a very interesting, very beautiful place. That sounds great. If I ever go yeah. to Brazil, I'll come and say hi. Sure, no, you are invited. Okay, very beautiful place. Excellent. Santa. And hi also. Ah, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, I think Andrea asked a question there. Uh, now we should resolve Fermat's last theorem at the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Andre, see, Andre's another genius. All right, guys, I'm going to hang up. I, I've got another couple of classes to get to, uh, but if there are any questions about anything, please don't hesitate to ask any questions. Well, Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And I want to say we have a, several uh, Muslim students, so good luck on your Ramadan. Uh, thank you for joining me. I know you probably are hungry. I think you are able to eat now. I'm not sure. Um, Sydney, you are also fasting. Uh, you have one more hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to stop right now. <laughs> 
I hope everybody has a fantastic two weeks, and I will see you in two weeks. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye bye, guys. Congratulations. Excellent bye. job. I Thank learned you. a lot. Bye bye. Bye I'll bye. See you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Great job today. Hi, coach, and goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good talking to you, Amir. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.